revolutionary, a rebel, Mother Africa, just a few of the ways that Winnie Madikizela Mandela has been described over the years. The South African politician, the iconic anti-apartheid activist, died on April the 2nd at the age of 81. And since then, there has been a fierce debate about her legacy. Now, as South Africans continue to remember Mama Winnie, as she was called, we explore how her activism shaped the country's political landscape. I'm Malika Bilal. And I'm Femi OK. Right now, you're in the stream. We're live on Al Jazeera and on YouTube, so you can put your questions and comments in YouTube. Chat to us, tweet us at hashtag AJStream, and we'll do our very best to get all of those comments into today's show. She has been one of the strongest women in our struggle who suffered immensely under the apartheid regime, who was imprisoned, who was banished, who was treated very badly, separated not only from her husband but from her children as well and her people. But notwithstanding all this, she remained strong, she remained determined, she was courageous. That was South African President Cyril Ramaphosa speaking about the death of Winnie Madizikela Mandela. Ramaphosa called Mandela a gigantic tree, and for many South Africans, she is a hero whose fight against apartheid made her a pillar of the movement. But to her critics, Mandela is a divisive figure. She's been described as a bully who engaged in corrupt and criminal activity to achieve her goals. Mandela's actions during apartheid awarded her a fair share of detractors, even within her ANC party. But news of her passing prompted people to pay tribute to her distinction as mother of the nation. Online, many used hashtag I am Winnie Mandela. And she didn't die, she multiplied. And also all black with a duke or headscarf to pay homage to her life's work. Dr. E tweets, patriarchy is humbled during these 10 days of mourning. They tried to erase her. We invoked her spirit like never been seen before. So what is Winnie Mandela's enduring legacy? Joining us now via Skype in Johannesburg, Lebo Mashile is an actor, writer and poet. Nomzamo Mbata is also an actor as well as a UNHCR ambassador. Lebo Hampiko is a senior research fellow at the Trade Collective. That's an economic policy think tank. And in London, Pascal Lamsha is a filmmaker who directed Winnie. That's a documentary about Mandela's life currently available on Netflix. Hello, ladies. It's good to have you all together. Lebo, can you tell us one little story about a relationship that you have with Winnie Mandela that explains so much about her personality. What story would you tell us? Oh, wow. Um, I remember at the 60th anniversary of Drum Magazine, she was honored as the, as the icon of the last 60 years for Drum. And she stood up on stage and said, there is no pain I have not experienced. And chills went through my body because how much does a human being have to endure to be able to say those kinds of words with authority? Um, Winnie Mandela experienced some of the most harrowing suffering that any human being could ever endure. Uh, it was, it was, it, they made a sport out of trying to take away her dignity and, and continue to try to make a sport out of trying to erase her legacy and her contribution. But in the face of that, um, she, she stands tall, she stands with truth, mm. she stands with conviction, and she lives in the heart of South African people, and we've seen that in the last week. Numzamo, I'm hearing some recognition. It, that's resonating with you, because why? Absolutely. I think for me, she's always symbolized an oak tree, you know, unshakable, unmovable, and so resilient in not only the mission, but also in knowing just how important her her voice has been, yes. you know. Um, for me, I can only hope okay. that wherever she's sitting, oh, I see. Okay, she no knows problem. that her mission is <laughs> really, you. really done. There's nothing that she has not done for the people of this country. Um, I said in an article that I just wrote, I said, when we stand tall amongst other nations, let us say that we are the people of Winnie Matigizela Mandela. 
we are her people, you know. And, and thank you to South African women for honoring her in the 10 days of, of, of mourning, for honoring her spirit, mm. for, 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 for crushing and silencing the loud voice of patriarchy. It is nowhere to be found. And that was the true spirit of the woman that we are in mourning of. So and you celebrate her life, mm. actually. You know, Nomzamo, you are, uh, you mentioned the patriarchy and your, your remembrance of her, and that's something that has come up a lot. So I want to share a remembrance from someone on Twitter who had the pleasure of meeting her. Uh, they've changed their handle to We Are Winnie, but they write, I've had numerous personal interactions with Mama that have endeared her to me in a special way. Going to the ANC conference in 2006, I was amongst Volko Thabo Mbeki supporters one Sunday in her house. She said to me, Finding your voice and being true to your convictions is paramount in politics. I loved her stubborn character as a woman, especially who had to learn to stand her ground, being often shadowed, overshadowed by men. Uh, Lebohan, I, I want to direct this to you, that, that idea of being overshadowed mm -hmm. and, and her role as a leader, maybe not getting the accolades that some believe she deserved. Lebohan? You've got two Labuhan. So there's Labuhan Peko, and then there's me, Lebu. <laughs> Let's let Labuhan uh, uh, Peko answer that question. That's just so okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I, I think the, the whole idea of women in struggle is one that's contested anywhere in the world. Um, and we've always been forced into binaries. It's either she's the wife, a person is a wife, a daughter, a mother. And, and a lot of the politics that we have seen is, is, is really steeped in, in mothering, mothering politics. Uh, and, and I think that what this does is it really diminishes the role and the function of women as social agents, as change agents, as revolutionary political agents. And I think that Mrs. Uh, you know, Mewini epitomized it in so many ways. And I think, secondly, the thing with, with, with um, Nomzamo, is, is memory and visibility. And, and I have always contested that memory is one of the most important tools of insurrection. The right to remember and the right to mm. recognition, the right to recognize what is and what is not, and the right to multiple ways of memory is extremely important. So what we have seen um, mm. is that, you know, rather than, than, than wanting to have multilinear ways of remembrance, we want things that are neat and tidy and that are put in boxes. Mm. People are either good people or bad people. They're either saints or they're sinners. They're either heroes and they're villains. And that's not life. And that's not struggle. And that's not politics. That's not real. History is littered mm. with people, great, you know, amazingly, um, amazingly mediocre people morally who did fantastic things and vice versa. And I think that what we try to do, what, what is the worst injustice, is try to put somebody into this horrible box rather than allowing them to speak for themselves, not only during their life, but also from beyond the grave. And this kind of false piety and this state amnesia is really, really very disempowering. And it's also anti-democratic. It assumes that there's only one way of recalling and one way of remembering. And the state in this, in, on this occasion has been part of the, the repository of false memory and, and very narrow memory, mm. particularly narrowing the role of women, what's but a, particularly narrowing Lebohan, the role of Lebohan. other parties even. Lebohan, what's the false memory? What's the false memory that you've been, you've been hearing in the, in the past memory week? memory is, is the attempt to try to keep, put somebody in a box, to try to erase the role of others, to try to attempt For to example, you're talking general or now, or we're, we're, but this is very not. specific. You're, so, so you're saying false memory. So what's happened in the last week that's been a false memory of Winnie Mandela? Oh. oh gosh, the, uh, there, there are many. I mean, I think I, I, I can only one. use I can only use one example. Yeah. One example is a picture that appeared on the web, and I think, like many people, the last week or so, I was trawling through YouTube and repositories and online to try and make sense of of of, of all of this. I had the opportunity to to meet Menom Zamo on a couple of occasions, and and, and she was always this really mesmerizing figure. Uh, and, and there's a picture of her where she is um, sitting at the TRC with um, uh, Stompi's mother, uh, and Stompi Moikati's mother. And mm. I think that, that that's really, really important. And she has, she's sitting with his little sister on her lap. And these, these are two women, two mothers, two figures, two, two very iconic 
struggle icons in different ways, sure. mem- as a, as a, at a community level, sitting comfortably, and for all the vilification that Mewini had to endure regarding this. So Lebo Hang, let me just Mr. help with our international audience. So, so Stompy was the young man that Winnie Mandela was, was, was believed to have been involved in his murder. Yes, even though the, uh, several, okay, well, I've got to come in. Yeah. George Bezos have said that's not so. All right, so let me just bring in Pascal here. Pascal, this documentary, Winnie, you, you are almost revisiting history, retelling history in a different way. I want our audience to see a little bit of the trailer. It is now available on Netflix and actually in South Africa on Wednesday on ENCA. That will be the premiere in South Africa. Have a little look at how Pascal has retold this story. Have a look. We were the cannon fodder. We were the foot soldiers and we were exposed to the viciousness of apartheid. There's thinking people and there's people are determined to survive and there's fighters. She's an activist. She's not the type of person who can be voiceless. Pascal, after all of this time of Winnie Mandela being an incredibly famous leader, what more was there to tell of her story? What did you discover? Well, the most significant um, elements of my research, and, and obviously in the filmmaking, I, I, I spent a lot of time with Winnie and interviewed her many, many times. But uh, the critical aspects that are going to come out in, and have come out in my film and are now being echoed um, throughout South Africa by various journalists who are digging a little deeper than even I was able to dig, um, is that she was, uh, you know, a supremely uh, significant and powerful political figure uh, inside South Africa, and she was effectively neutralized politically by a combination of a special branch, um, a huge, in fact, operation to discredit and smear her um, and when you see the film, you'll, you'll see, you know, all the elements that have been brought forward to, to prove this case. It's absolutely clear. And in fact, the commissioner of police, George Fivers, um, yesterday or today, I think, on television in South Africa, confirmed that in their reinvestigations um, of her in the, ni- in the late 1990s, it was clear that she had nothing to do with the murder of Stompy Sipe, that Stompy Sipe, or mm. Maketsi, as he was called, was murdered by Jerry, Jerry Richardson, who then went to jail uh, for life. Um, and he was a, polit- uh, a police informer, uh, a, a, a very significant one, um, who was paid a great deal of money to not only inform on her, but on all her operations, because she was a high-ranking commander in Umkontowe Seasway, which was the military wing of the ANC at the time. Paul Erasmus, who um, was the deputy of a man I interviewed in my film, Vic McPherson, who was the director of STRATCOM, which was a major psychological warfare operation um, that had amongst Mm. its uh, various elements an anti-revolutionary program called Romulus. Mm. Um, Paul Erasmus just today confirmed that the entire um, Mandela football club were, in fact, uh, paid informants working for the right. special branch mm. services. And, and Pascal, I think that what you're referencing for someone who's seen the film, and so, so many of our viewers, yeah. of course, have yeah. not yet seen it, the interviews sure. are incredible, and the access that you got is incredible. But I think for some people, it's going to, as Femi said earlier, it's going to show a mm. view of events they know, but not necessarily in the way they know that. That's not surprising for some mm. people online. This is Kay. She says it's very typical to so often see women reduced to good or bad, submissive or aggressive, dominating or subservient. The narrative of women is either black or white with no patches of gray in between. And of course, she's not talking about your film. She's talking about some of the other narratives that are out there about Winnie Mandela. We also got a video comment from someone who says something very similar. And she says the world doesn't know how to treat women like this. This is uh, Lindsay Shutel. She's a journalist at Quartz. And here's what she said. The manner in which 
Winnie Mandela's legacy was dealt with in the immediate aftermath of her death shows that the world still doesn't know how to deal with so-called complex women. If she had been a man, I sincerely do not believe that she would have faced the criticism that she has faced even in death. I think for South Africa in particular, her legacy is bringing up lots of questions about the compromises the country made uh, to end apartheid. When Winnie Mandela criticized the so-called sunset clauses, criticized her former husband and the party's decision to negotiate with the very people who harassed her and tortured her. Many dismissed her as unforgiving, uncompromising, and in particular, an, em an emotional, angry woman. Lebo Mashile, you, you hear her talking about the way that Winnie has been dismissed and her legacy almost tarnished in a way. What do you make of her point? I think it speaks to what a threat Winnie was. I'm very excited that the nation is going to get to see Pascal's documentary. The, the, the clips of it that have been doing the rounds in the last couple of weeks have created a furor because for the last 25 years, she had the cloud of stompy hanging over her head. I mean, there are people like me, many people like me, who felt like Winnie had endured so much that would have created such a psychological and emotional toll that even had she participated in whatever act, you know, it was a time of war. It was a time when, when, when people were, were, people were fighting. Violence was the language of the day. I mean, we've still inherited that legacy. We've elected freedom fighters as presidents. We've elected people who killed people as presidents. So I've always said that, you know, I love Winnie unconditionally. But to realize that this was a smear campaign, so that we would not have Winnie as an active politician and mm. leader in a free and democratic South Africa, that is, that's diabolical. I, I, I never thought that it was possible for my respect for Winnie to grow, but in the last week, it has grown infinitely, just to realizing that, you know, she, she endured this with, such dignity and compassion in the times that I've interacted with her and seen her, she was always full of light and, and smiles and generosity of spirit. So, Lebo, there are going to be people watching that this. That kind of betrayal from her own people. Lebo, it's, they, they, it's, it's unbelievable. I hear you. I hear you. And, and I under understand the context in which you're saying it's the struggle against apartheid. There will be people watching who are going to be seeing these headlines and truly believe them because yeah. even in South Africa, in the ANC, no. She was not a universally loved person. Let me show you some headlines. I want to hear your instant reaction. Here we go. The Independent, Winnie Mandela, the mother of the nation or a murderous bully. Yeah. Winnie Mandela, mother then mugger of New South Africa. Uh, Reuters toned that down a little bit when people got mad. Winnie Mandela, tarnished mother of post-apartheid South Africa. There are people, there are South Africans who do not like, did not like Winnie Mandela. Lebohang, Peko, can you explain? Do you can you explain why? A couple of things that I, I, I understand yeah, in terms of I absolutely can. Uh, in terms of a, a woman leader and how she purports herself in public, there was judgment there. Lebohang, take this a little bit further. Let's dig into this because it's this this is the darker side or sides of Winnie Mandela that people are upset about. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, everybody is dark and light. Um, we want things that are, we want binaries. When mm. we speak about legacy, we have to accept legacy in its totality. And, and I think, as my namesake has said, uh, and, and I've been, you know, I resonate completely. This is war. This was war. Apartheid, the, the colonial anti imperial struggle was a time of bloodshed, a time of life. So, Leberhang, Leberhang, let's just take it that I get that our audience uh, at Al Jazeera understand that, they get that. So what are the darker elements of Winnie Mandela that you are comfortable about talking about in public? This is all part of legacy, correct? Yeah, I think I, I'm not even interested in going down the dark side because I think that that, 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 that doesn't, you know, whatever that may or may mm. not be. This was a liberation struggle. Mm. This was a time mm. of, um, mm. of, of, of contestation. In the same way that I think no American is going to be interested in being told that Ronald Reagan was, had seen our dementia for the last few years of his presidency. We never see mm. those bylines. We never mm. hear people talk about Margaret, the uh, fact that Margaret Thatcher, people died when, during the miners' strike in the UK. Children yeah. died because she was so not... So, hang it's, it's not my job necessarily to argue so with you, but yes, is, those, those conversations did come up about those leaders. Yes, they did. 
they absolutely did come up about Ronald Reagan and also Margaret Thatcher on their passing. The byline. Mm -hmm. They are not the constant byline, they're sure not the sure. constant headline. <laughs> and, and I think that what's quite important to understand, I'm sorry, I think I'm interrupting somebody, but what's quite important to understand is that, you know, when we come to a point where we are going to be continually speaking on somebody, even when they're gone, even when there's no evidence to, to link them to the things that are said to have been, they, they have been accused of, mm -hmm. that's very problematic. We are, not, we are now dwelling in the realm of, of what I call the false memory, because it isn't true. These things are not actually true. And secondly, the context is very, is very dynamic. We need to be able to allow our social democracy to enable different memories and multiple memories to come to the fore. The fact is that Winnie Mandela was an iconic woman living through difficult times mm -hmm. and surviving difficult times, like many other struggle women and combatants mm -hmm. in struggle. And often we forget that being a combatant mm -hmm. is shameful because the cost of freedom is never free. Veterans and combatants are the ones who do the dirty work, the dirty work of, li of, of liberating mm -hmm. and keeping us free. They are our dirty secrets, and we need to deal with that. But I will not, I will not come on a platform and vilify Nomza um, Mamadi Gizela again. Mm. Certainly not. So, Lebuhan, picking up on what you're saying, I want to read this tweet from Tsheko, who says, Winnie Mandela knew that in order to achieve true liberation, the entire status quo would need change. She led the ANC Women's League in the early 90s and was always outspoken and militant, but also fiercely feminine and was still able to invoke change. And that inspired many women in politics today. Nomzamo, I want to give that one to you because I know that you were just with the family uh, earlier today before this show. And that's because there's a, a special place in your heart for Winnie Mandela, who inspired you to do something. Do you want to share that with our audience? Um, just to touch base on, 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 on what Lebo Hang was saying, I think also just to add, at the end of the day, whether, you know, no matter what the headlines are saying, at the end of the day, we have lost our hero. She is no longer. We will not be dwelling on any negative headlines or whatever propaganda that's going on, we will honor the legacy. I certainly wouldn't want to leave this earth and have people um, run with any kind of propaganda about my imperfections mm. or, or, or supposed imperfections. Celebrate the life that I lived and allow me to rest in peace because most probably I didn't find it trying to fight for the liberation of this country. Um, my connection with her started when I was born, when my mother, when my grandmother named me Nomzamo, she named me after her. And I was born during a time when South Africa was literally on fire. And the fire was supposedly dying down, but not really, which was about 1990. So for me, her, my connection with her has always been that of, of, of struggle, that mm. of striving, that of overcoming against all odds. And, and whenever I was around her, there was something about her. She was very cheeky, mm -hmm. very cheeky, very charming, extremely stubborn. But what a presence, what a woman. She would always hold me and then pull me back and almost just to examine me and look me in the eye and mm -hmm. say, yeah, no zam. And with her beautiful, 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 graceful smile. Mm -hmm. you know, and that for me was, was one of the things that really set her apart, that she saw people. You know, she would look each person in the eye as if they are the only thing that exists, mm. the only thing that matters. Mm. And so there's no way that I can't not go and see sure. the children and see her grandchildren and make mm. them feel like they are the only thing that matters right. at this very time. Nothing else. So no Nomzamo. matter what, you know, the world is saying. So Nomzamo. Nomzamo and Pascal and Lebo Hang and Lebo, we do not have enough time to talk about the legacy of Winnie Mandela. But thank you for the time that you gave us. We really appreciate it. This is a conversation that is going to go on for a long, long, long time. Thank you, ladies, for helping us bring it to life here on the AJ Stream. And this is a little clip from 2009 and an interview with Mike Hanna and Winnie Mandela. Thanks for watching, everybody. To relive uh, this struggle a hundred times more, if at the end of it I would achieve precisely what we achieved as the African National Congress, the liberation of South Africa, the liberation of my people.